the select board meeting to order. And we have uh, Charles Cook, Shelley. We have Megan. Who else do we have? Anybody else? We Sarah. have um, Sarah Seedman and Shelley Desjardins. Oh, Dave Magida. Dave Magida. Dave Magida came in. Yeah. Sandy Levine. Sandy Levine. I, don't see, I don't see Dave anywhere here. They're in the audience. You don't see the audience. Oh, just on the audio? Okay. All right. And then there's Barb and Greg. So, so again, we're going to have to be. Uh, if people who want, want to speak who I can't see, you're just going to have to. You're just going to have to gently and politely interrupt. Uh, for the others, wave your hand or shake a fist or do whatever you need to do. So, are there any uh, are there any amendments to tonight's agenda? No. Okay. So, with that, the first uh, item on our agenda is Vermont Integrated Architects to discuss the town hall study and survey the results from the community needs, wants, et cetera, et cetera. Is that you, Megan? That's me. Okay, well, you are on. Welcome again. Uh, all right, Welcome. great. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not there in person. Um, I look forward to being in person with you uh, next time we meet. Um, I'm, I, am I able to share my screen? Go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'll try. Can you see yeah. that? It's coming on, yeah. Yes, there it is. Okay, great. Uh, so I think we've got about 30 minutes uh, together here. So in that time, our my hope was to high level review of um, what we learned from the survey that you did with your community. I'd like to review a draft uh, space program. Um, and I'll describe a little bit when we get to that point about uh, what that document is and what it will do for us as a part of our process. And then um, we prepared a schedule. Uh, looking forward to the next meetings for our study approach and just want to confirm that uh, timeline. So briefly before I, I dive in, a uh, quick update on some of the work that we've done thus far. We did have a kickoff meeting um, with a group of representatives uh, from town of Middlesex a few weeks back. We've prepared this schedule. We did some measuring of the existing building as well as photographing and documentation of existing conditions. We've prepared um, existing site plan and floor plans. And we've also, as a part of that initial site visit, did a 3D um, scan uh, that's basically three-dimensional photography that builds a little model for us of the existing town hall. And we've shared those back um, with your team. So we've got sort of good foundation, good groundwork uh, to get us moving on a great process here. Um, so to start on the survey, um, I'm not exactly sure if it was uh, who put the questions um, together, but it was a great set of questions. And I understand that it went out to your community. There were 241 responses received, which to start, I'll just say kudos to you, town of Middlesex. <laughs> that is a very engaged community and that, that's pretty wonderful. Um, so at a high level here, I'm just gonna hit the couple questions and some of the big takeaways. I will say that deeper in the comments, um, there's a lot more nuance and um, a lot more information that's shared back and um, we'll continue to discuss that as a part of the process. Um, and feel free to jump in and interrupt me if you want me to stop um, at any point. Um, so this first one was about location, keep the town office centrally located. And um, looking here, over 75% of the respondents um, saw that as important to some level. As you dive into the comments, um, centrally located in the village, um, there's some conversation there about what that means um, for the community. So some really good insights. Um, Question two was regarding the historic character of the building. And again, you'll see um, not quite as strong on the extremely important as the last question, but overall 69% um, of respondents really felt to varying degrees that that was important um, to maintain those historic aspects. 
The next question was space available for other community um, and social gatherings and um, that really kind of strong response here at 83% um, of respondents saying that that was extremely important, very important or somewhat important. Um, the fourth question was uh, kitchen facilities and if those should be um, included in the renovated space and also um, be accessible for meeting social gatherings and, um, or community gatherings. And together, 65% felt that that was um, important. Um, space for a community food shelf, again, 75% um, said that that was important to some level to be a part of this, um, to be considered as a part of the spatial uses of the town offices. Um, so question six uh, then sort of shifted gears a little bit and was speaking more to the performance of the building. Um, and so the question here was, should the town office meet a higher environmental and energy standard um, than just current building code? And an overwhelming 90.95% or 221 of the respondents um, viewed that as important. Um, the next question then kind of stayed with that same vein of environmental and energy standards, but then related it back to grant funding or how to pay for that, um, any additional premium. And so 93.7% um, felt that that was important. And to kind of relate this back to the results that we saw in the last uh, sheet that I had up here, it's only 2.8% more um, felt that this was a a need without grant funding. So that's sort of the, the shift there, uh, likening it back to the uh, cost implications. <clears throat> and uh, question eight, um, this again was staying in that vein of environmental and energy standards um, related to the town office. And should these only be done if they could um, produce long-term operational savings and cost, and that was 69.36%. Uh, so that's 21, about 22% less than just felt that it was necessary. So that's kind of the, the demonstration of the, again, the fiscal performance. Um, so which, <clears throat> and then finally, I will say the last question um, I spent a fair amount of time with this was, you know, are there other questions um, or insights that you would like this uh, study to address? Um, and there were quite a few responses there. Uh, people were offered the opportunity to give feedback. Uh, so we're, we're working through those. Um, many of them responded and uh, were questions around cost. And we're really kind of raising questions about what this study should be about of comparing this um, facility to see what could be accomplished here um, with renovating the building or um, if it would be a new building, which is exactly um, what our study is setting up to do in this initial phase. A um, number of the other comments really related to accessibility and um, being able to improve that so that the upper level was more accessible um, to, um, yeah, to all residents. So I'm going to stop there. Any questions on that or any comments? This, this is Liz. Um, I would just comment that on the final question, um, how important is it, number eight, how important is it to you that meeting higher environmental and energy standards be done only if they produce long-time operational cost savings? I think almost that that I think was a bit of a trick question that um, that if you wanted if you wanted long term if you wanted that but but not at any cost right like this is saying so so if I really wanted it done no matter what I would say not at all important because this was around only if um, it produced long term operational cost savings. And so that I think is doesn't this answer doesn't really tell us exactly what people were thinking because I'm not sure 
that, I mean, people might have answered, oh, it's very important that we have long-term operational cost savings, but not at any cost, right? So I'm, I'm not sure how valuable that question was, but whatever. We, we created those questions, but yeah. I saw that. I sure. agree with your analysis. Okay. Okay, any other questions or comments? And, and I do think that the comments that were shared related to each of the questions, and especially the last one, um, do help sort of, I think you're right, Liz, for those folks that maybe their answers here are somewhat misleading. You get a little bit more insight when you start to read the comments. Um, people um, go a little further to describe that. <laughs> okay. So our next, I, I think what we've um, at a high level distilled from that is um, really what we're gonna look at next is the, the space program. And so this is essentially a laundry list of square footages and usage, what the building would be used for. And so um, I'll, I'll bring up a document here in just a second, but what we've gone through is tried to catalog the various spaces in the existing building and how many square feet are currently um, uh, attributed to those uses. And in some cases, we've already learned from our kickoff meeting, things like the vault, for instance, should be expanded in size. And so what we're trying to do is come up with how much square footage do we need for each of these different uses? And then we'll go, um, once we're able to confirm that, we'll go back and begin uh, doing some layouts for folks to react to. So what we learned from the survey and some of those survey comments, um, I've included here some line items related to some of these um, additional uses. So community gathering spaces, kitchen space, things like that. Um, so I'm gonna bring that up again. <clears throat> so here, Try to zoom in. Um, here you can see um, these are the existing spaces um, and they're noted by which level they occur on. You're all um, very familiar with the building um, and the amount of square footage per each. And what we're hoping to do is kind of go through here. We've under we've heard already that the vault needs to be expanded. We've assumed expanding that to twice. And then in general, um, really wanted to kind of work with uh, you to understand, and I can do this live, um, of are there particular, like how are we thinking about each of these spaces? Like for the town clerk, is the current space allocated even though it may not be in the same space? Is it an appropriate amount of space? Are you asking us this? Yes. You're asking us to comment. Okay. Are you guys able to see yes. it? Okay. I also have printouts that it's in Okay. Well, Sarah, what do you think? You're the person, you and Dorinda, who are downstairs on that first section. Um, may I speak, Liz? Yeah. Or, um, Peter? So I guess my question, Megan, is, um, I'm not seeing any space for any finances. I see Lister's office, Lister's mm -hmm. closet and storage. I don't see any financial space. We need a financial space for okay. store. That's really important. This is the yeah, town's yeah, whole uh, means where they do all the accounting, bookkeeping, and also storage of their financial records. Okay. And the size, what do you think? What would what are you thinking like in terms of comparison? Well, I think it at least has to be. Uh, uh, I think it has to be the uh, size of the Lister's office. Frankly, I mean, I think that the what you're saying, the Lister closet and storage that that closet is, uh, holds uh, bank records, it holds uh, supplies, it holds office supplies. So it's way more than just for the Lister's. Um, in fact, sure. the listers don't have anything in that closet. Right? In fact, yeah, they don't have anything in that closet. So there needs to be somehow, and it also I think that the nature of, of uh, finances is that they do need to kind of be able to concentrate. I think when people are coming in and coming out, there's a lot of distraction. It's very hard to do your job there. While also being accessible to the public, just in case someone wants to come in and pay their tax bill. Sure. 
Okay, so a financial space that would be for accounting, bookkeeping, and storage of records, and you're thinking, you know, a similar in size to this. To that whole office? Yeah, yeah 261 uh, square feet. That's, That's the blister stuff? That's what she's saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm looking at it, it just doesn't look. No, they it's where Cheryl, that it's right where now Cheryl, it's Cheryl shared. is and the listers. Right. Oh, oh, oh. So Sorry. right now it's a yeah. shared space. It's, it's a shared, shared space currently, and at times we have up to five people in that office, and it becomes very distracting. So I would say even half of that, you know, if you split it between the listers and... I don't understand where the small meeting room is versus the large, oh, large meeting hall is upper, sorry. Yeah, so maybe I can back up here for just a second. So this is the lower level floor plan, and I can see if I can try to share both of these on the screen um, at the same time, side by side, so you can okay. testing my Zoom abilities here. Um, okay, so this entry vestibule is this space here. Um, so these numbers on the side of the program document that you have in front of you correspond to the number that's on the drawings. Um, so town clerk three is this area in purple, so the vault there. So in general, I think by going through this, we're basically hoping to say, you know, the area for the clerk is about right, or it needs to be about 25% bigger. And you know the vault is needs to be bigger and needs to be doubled or tripled. So I think that's in general. So um, we can work through each of these, and then what we have heard to this point. I just added financial space here. That Sarah um, mentioned the other things that we had questions about in our meetings to date. There was some mention in our past meeting of should a highway department office have space here in this building? Should there be additional meeting space in addition to um, any of these that are currently up here, something that would be added? Should the historical society have space in here and do they have, is it um, sort of display space? Is it storage? Um, I just put storage in general because that's always a concern. And then from the um, survey results, we saw the question about kitchen space and then also the suggestion of a community food shelf. So at this point, what we're trying to do is line out um, in broad strokes, um, what are we trying to achieve with the facility to come up with overall square footage, um, which would then assess, you know, can we meet those needs within this existing building? Um, and more likely that an addition would be required and that'll begin to help us understand what size addition. And then we'll start to do some of those layouts to better understand it. And then that would be compared against um, the potential uh, new building for square footage to basically say, um, you know, for the same size amount of square feet to accomplish these things, um, this is how much would be needed. Hey, Megan, could I ask a question? When you're yeah. when you were looking at the top floor, did you consider this area that I use for land recording at all as part of the town clerk's office? Because that used to be all downstairs. We had to move it upstairs when we built the COVID counter. Um, fifteen nineteen. So that's one o two. It's all in the meeting hall. It's it's all right there. Yep. And so I think we could essentially say, you know. You've, you've got about that amount of space there. So we could say it's that space plus the clerk okay. space. So that you did put that upstairs. She did not. It, it's, not. It's, it's, it's all in the, better. right. So I could do that takeoff and add to it. If that if that's what you're saying is like this amount of space and that amount of space for you seems like what is needed. Okay, because okay. that's a really important part of the town okay. clerk's office. We can't kind of operate without that that square footage, that's how much. So we doubled it. So basically we're gonna double the town clerk, not using this space up here, but say that we need twice as much town hall, I mean, twice as much town clerk space as what's on here. Because, yeah, because what you've got now is 166 and 166 and there's not, I don't see any change and then I don't see anything for recording. Right, right. The, the draft that you have in front of you was our working copy. And so I've got 
as we work through it here. Right. Um, so I just heard twice. So I've yeah. I've doubled that. And then for the vault, I've doubled that. Can I ask a question? Yes, Sandy. This is Sandy Levine. Um, how do we consider the possibility of um, space being used jointly? Are you are you talking about like shared roles? Like Cheryl is right, both like the maybe, select board assistant and the bookkeeper. Or like maybe the food shelf could be as part of something that's otherwise used as a meeting room, or the meeting room could be the listeners could possibly work in a section of the meeting room, I, or or even the efficiency of of the square footage. Or is it? Are we just looking at? Look at what you have now. What's what's missing from what you have now that we want to make sure is included going forward, and then you'll figure out how best to make all those uses fit together. Yes, I think what what we're trying to understand here is, you know, this needs to be separate, or this need. So, for instance, with the example of the small meeting room, like we need a small, like one meeting room that accommodates eight to 10 people. And then we need another meeting room that accommodates four to six people. And then for something like the food shelf, I guess the question is, you know, should this space be accommodated here? And if so, you may not necessarily have an idea of square footage, but if you could share with us that it's, you know, um, someone else to speak to who might be able to help us hone in on that amount of space would be very helpful or if you're like oh i think um there are you know it's a small closet or i mean we're, we're trying to assess <laughs> the level of um the needs and what you're interested to have included here does that does that help mm -hmm. yeah, thank, thank you, you. Who's the who do I ask? Uh, just, 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 you can ask Peter. Peter. <laughs> uh, you know, if you see my hand, I have a question, comment, Dave Mejia. Yeah, go ahead, Dave. Yes. Uh, we want to make sure we're not getting ahead of ourselves right now. I think we may be doing that a little bit. Uh, but Megan, you're going to go through and gather what the needs are. Part of just doing this is saying when are those needs happening? Some might be full time. So it might be a certain time of the year, so it might be a certain time of the, the, the day. And we can look at all of that, and there may be some things that are coincidence or non coincidence. We can save some space and use, have different groups using that same space. But right now, we're well ahead, ahead of that point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think understanding um, as we go through these spaces it's like okay there's often a need or we anticipate a need um that we'd like to be able to have two meetings at the same time and those two meetings probably wouldn't both at the same time be for 40 people we would schedule those we would handle that operationally but it may be like well no we'd rather um we really see that it's mostly a need for just you know one meeting space and then we would have someone else go um into another space for flex spaces so, excuse me, I have a, I have a couple of questions. One, one question is, and this is really a question for you, Sarah, but as, as more and more of our town records are digitized, what's our obligation to keep those old books on site? Can't they be stored somewhere yeah. else, some kind of an yeah. archive? I mean, I just, I just wonder if we really need, what well, the question is, do we really need to double the vault space? I know it's tight now, but it's mostly tight because there's a lot of stuff in there that almost nobody ever looks at. Well, that's not so. true. There's a lot of stuff. I have to store voting. I have to store ballots in there. I have to store. Uh, and the problem is the legislature hasn't caught up. The legislature has not said you're allowed to store this stuff off site. The legislature wants the paper records in the town vault. And they want, uh, you know, we can, we can save some space by getting rid of an inde a card catalog, I'll still have to keep it in the building somewhere, but I won't have to keep it in the vault. But they still want, I still have to make paper copies of every single digital record I see. Dang. And I have to, and I have to, yeah, I have to keep a paper index. I have to keep, do all that. All right. All right. 
Okay, so you think you think doubling the ball is what we need to yes. do? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my mm -hmm. other question is, um, with regard to the with regard to the meeting space issue, um, we had quite a go round with the school district about our ability to use that school building but certainly we're going to need to use that school building for any large meeting no matter what and guess what the school building has a kitchen bathrooms you know a lot of capability to do a lot of the things we're talking about so i just want to be sure when we're creating i mean we want to be able to have select board meetings we want to be able to have small size public hearings etc but i just want to be sure that we're not creating too much meeting space because sure. you know and and uh you know right now our the, the meeting space in the existing town hall is is barely used i mean we hold our select board meetings up there now every two weeks um but that's mostly because of because of COVID concerns and using the having space to use the owl and have members of the public there but uh I just I just don't know how people feel about our our ability certainly the our ability to use the school I should say for for potentially other meetings I mean they've certainly been uh, been snarky to us in the past about uh, being able to have access to the school and that's definitely an issue as we go through this process if we're going to be able to use the school on an as needed basis with proper notice that's one thing if every time we go to use the school they throw up all kinds of roadblocks. That's a totally different. Uh, that's a totally different issue. I would agree that the 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 um, space downstairs, the small meeting room plus the large meeting hall, um, doesn't necessarily have to stay the way that it is right now, right? Like where you have this one giant open space that is rarely used for anything significant. And then you have a meeting space downstairs where maybe there's overflow of people looking at, you know, documents and things like that. Um, I think that this upstairs can be, I think that we need to think about this upstairs and what function this upstairs serves, right? Does it serve multiple rooms, like a small meeting room if people wanna have a little knitting club? Does it feature a little corner for a food shelf? Is this where we have our meetings, like our select board meetings? And downstairs actually gets turned into some more meetings, you know, some more office space for Dorinda, right? And maybe that doesn't, maybe you don't have to push the building out then. Because we're not gonna have town meeting here. We've already dis, dis, discerned that, like that's never gonna happen. Any large scale public meeting is going to be where we want hundreds of people to come is not going to be here. Yeah, so let me pick up on a couple of threads that I heard there. So I think um, in this in the space that you're currently sitting in there, um, I think the last time we met, there were things of, you know, audio, visual and acoustics could make it challenging uh, to have a meeting. But if that could be remedied, um, as a part of this project, um, it would it be a reasonable and a favorable place for the select board to be able to meet? And then if there was something that required a lot of community input and there were many people that came and showed up, you know, it could accommodate quite a few or it could be. Um, so I, I think we'd say maybe it's for, it could typically accommodate maybe 12 to 20 but then could grow to a larger group if needed. Is that fair? I think we talked about like 40 to 50 people maximum that you would have in a larger meeting space. But it could be two smaller spaces that one space expands to 40. And yes, smaller right. You could space. have it be where if you wanted it bigger, you move the slide, right, or right. something. And if I may just, just Remember that this is where we hold. This is where voting happens. So uh, right. we're all used to absentee voting, but there are still people who show up to vote. We're going to need at least one, two, three, four, five, or six, you know, voting booths. So, good point. 
Is that about half the size of this upstairs space? Yeah, it takes up the almost the entire it space takes, now. Yeah. Space. Uh, we just I, I kind of rope off this, but other than that, you know, by the time you get the in checkout checkout table, in, in get the booze and give everybody set, you really need almost the whole space except for that part, Cindy, that I have cordoned off over there. When we vote in in Romney, we don't have that oh. whole space. You'd be surprised. So, so guys, yeah. I just I just well, we've got we've got. 10 more minutes on our agenda and we barely started here. So I think we need to be all be thinking about all these all these issues. But I think Megan's got a lot more to tell us in a short period of time to do it. We can we can run over a little bit. We, we don't want to run over half an hour. So let's keep let's keep moving. OK, um, thank you. Sure. So I, the. The main focus of what we're uh, interested to cover today is really to understand your needs and so really trying to get a sense of this program. I think um, beyond that, I've shared uh, the schedule. Um, with the team, I believe you have a copy of that um, in front of you. So at our kickoff meeting, you know, the deep gray here are the upcoming meetings. Um, the agenda for those meetings or what we hope to discuss and accomplish is listed uh, below each of those. Um, and then these green bars are sort of the, the prep and the work that's happening between those uh, to, to get ready for that next meeting. Um, and so I guess uh, a, a question that we have, we have lined out these various meetings, part of our proposal and requests for our services for the study, you know, was to be having these conversations here um, with the select board. And so we put that forward. We're happy to continue to do that. Um, some of these conversations do take some time, um, <laughs> as you are um, understanding. And I'm, I'm curious, do we want to proceed with having those be a part of these select board meetings or should it be sort of broken off as a special meeting or with another um, yeah. task force? I think, answer, I think the answer, I'm sorry, I'll hold on just one second. I, th I think the answer to that is we just need to think about when we're going to have one of those meetings, how much time it's going to take because we work very hard to limit our select board meetings to two hours and we have other business we need to discuss. So if we need to have the answer is if we need to have special meetings, sure. You can have it, we can have a, certainly have a few uh a few special meetings. Um if we can do it during the select board time, that's great. But as we work our way through this process, there's gonna be a lot of stuff to talk about. So it's gonna I think it's gonna be some kind of combination of both. Yeah, somebody yeah. else wanted to speak? Yeah. yeah. Um my question, Wendy. I think the smaller committee that we had working on this project was going to try to do as much as we could without the select board. Uh, we could certainly issue the select board some homework that we want to have done at certain times, but I think we really need to be judicious about how much time we're asking for the select board during this beginning process. We'll check in with them. We can share information with them. We're not hiding anything, but I think there's a lot of work we can do that's not going to take up the full board's time. Yeah, thanks, David. That's exactly right. That's our intent. Sure. Okay. That that's helpful. That's more um, typical, I think, of what we've often seen um, to have sort of a smaller group and then kind of reporting back um, to the select board. And those meetings are also typically open. But you know, understanding you have much on your agenda that you're trying to achieve here and spending two hours uh, to look through floor plans or things. Uh, it is is difficult to do with everything else that's on your plate. So does it make sense then to circle back? Um, who should we who should we connect with then about that smaller sort of task force? You can connect with me or whoever. Okay. Sarah has a Sarah Seedman has a question. Guys here. I just I'm here representing the Middlesex Historical Society and we would just like to be part of that small group or part of the process. We think we can be a, a real asset to our community, uh, you know, in exhibits and in showing off to the people of Middlesex their heritage. So just want to make sure I, we're included at the table. So, Megan, is sort of the next step then to, um, as a smaller group, you know, look at what our existing size is, 
you know, come up with some proposed sizes based on what the feedback comes from the people that actually use those proposed spaces and sizes. Um, you know, for example, like the server room, I don't know if it should be bigger. You know, who do we ask on that? You know, RB Technologies? <laughs> You know, so I, I think that there's a lot more sort of questions we want to get so that you get a better sense. Because on the 21st, it sounds like you're coming, you're going to be coming back with a drawing or, or a, a proposal of what this might look like. Is that right? A month from now? Yeah. I mean, we, we need to um, nail down the program so we can, by the 21st, have those um, initial plans and concepts for you to react to and say, we like that, we don't like that, put these two together. Um, I guess looking at the schedule that we prepared for you, I'm going to uh, throw out a suggestion here and see uh, if this makes sense as a way to proceed. Um, you know, each of these meetings and sort of the tasks that were associated with them were suggested or we were responding to that they would go to the select board. And I guess my question is, I, um, I think it makes sense to stick with the same cadence and to stick with those same agendas, but maybe it's more with a smaller task force. And so we're meeting at a different time than the select board. And then um, maybe there's someone from that committee that could be reporting back to the select board on updates at those times. And then maybe we come back for our final, I'm gonna bring the schedule up here again so everybody can see it. You know, so um, I think, quickly we could try to connect uh, with that group to really finish that exercise that we just started on the program. And then somewhere around February 21st, you know, uh, we would come back together with that smaller group to kind of look at those um, items. And um, sorry, where am I? Where we I'm sorry, we are on February 21st today. So I think here in the next week, if we could connect with folks to kind of firm up that space program, that would be really helpful. Then we could come back to that um, smaller group sort of around um, March 21st uh, to then review plans. So we kind of move through here and then maybe come back to the select board um, at the end to sort of share, this is our progress to date, this is the study, this is what we've come up with. Um, and then it, along the way, I mean, there's only two more meetings remaining um, along the way, um, giving updates. Does that? Yeah, go ahead, Cindy. Um, maybe, I, I would suggest you meet with the smaller group ahead of the select board meeting so that Liz can report to the select board at the select board meeting what the outcome of that was. And, and I would almost argue not that I want to take up your time, Megan, but that it's really, I think, important for townspeople to hear it from a professional so that we're still going to meet with a subgroup and, you know, come up with some of the things that you're looking for here. And that might mean also meeting with you guys, you know, for an hour over Zoom, but then inviting you back on the 21st to give an overview again. I mean, I, that's sort of, what I would like to see. I don't mind giving the update. Um, I just think it's important that the townspeople hear from the professionals so that there's a little, so that there's buy-in from the community, right? That this isn't just Liz and the select board and this little group coming up with these ideas, but that this is, you know, working with you guys on this. Um, so the other smaller design meetings or study group meetings, if we call them, they would also be open to the public. So true? We could make them open to the public, yeah. Yeah. So they're probably randomly in the middle of the day, right? Like, when we're like, when can we all meet, right? Sure. So we can take a look at that um, and kind of assess related to our our steps forward. I, I don't have our proposal in front of us just regarding hours and things like that, but right. we can take a look and, and let's, let's figure out what makes sense for... Um, Middlesex and and do that. <laughs> so I will and then to connect with is it is Sarah and Liz, does that make sense to connect with you as the leads on this? Peter? Yes, Sarah. Peter, can I just say something? Is it uh, is it possible to have 
I'm wondering if maybe you guys would like one more week of time. Would it help if you had, if you guys moved your meeting to the 28th of March? Would that help if you're going to have these little committee meetings? Because you're coming up at a really fast deadline. Um, well, I think for us, we're at a point that really needing to nail down the program, what's in the building before we start drawing. So I think I would love to connect with um, the lead on who's putting together that other committee. Let's figure out what makes sense for the cadence of the meetings for that group and with the town. And then I think once we figured that out, let's look back at how that dovetails in with the select board meetings and the updates. You know, if we're not able to move that quickly, then I think we we pivot. I think they can't do anything until we give them right. more information at this point. Like they're just sitting here waiting. Okay. So you so you do have to meet earlier, like on the 21st versus the 28th. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think that's preferable based because they've got other projects they're working on too. Yeah, actually the exercise that we started here going through the program, if we could get together with that smaller group like we did uh, just a few weeks ago and kind of, and it, you don't have to have answers to every single one of them with an exact square footage, but it's more like that could be shared. We want space for the historical society. You know, the, the food shelf should be here, but we don't know how big. Could you help us figure out how big? you know, that kind of thing, or the food shelf absolutely shouldn't be here, or I, I don't know, but any of those insights um, that you've been able to, because um, of course, you know your community better than we do. But I think that we should be meeting with you before the 21st, okay. because yeah. 21st is the select board meeting, so we need to, in the next week, find a time that we we don't even need to meet with you. Right. First, we need to meet with ourselves and and talk about like what we're what we have come up with based on our conversations with everyone about size right and um so then we need to meet with you so that you can do this drawing right yes yeah. helpful um for you all to meet to kind of assess this is what we think we want and approximate sizes i do think before like just emailing that back to us um i think we would want to that's not really going to work. I think it would make sense whenever you've had a chance to review it and digest it yourself to be yeah, able to come yeah. back to us and say okay. like, okay, tell us more about this. And then I think we'll have questions like, could it be shared? Do you really need that much? How about this? Gotcha. Um, yeah. So how about I uh, reach out offline and we'll try to, you know, maybe in the next week or two, um, try to have that meeting to kind of confirm yes. the program. And then um, we may need to adjust some of these other select board meetings, depending on um, how the rest of the process goes, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else quickly, Megan, you'd like to tell us tonight? Any questions, anyone quickly? We're excited to be working with you and seeing a response of 241 residents is really pretty, pretty awesome. So we're excited to be involved with such an engaged town. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Okay. So we have uh, Scott here from the fire department. And Jeff is Jeff is here at Town Hall. I will. So you all got the, uh, the email that I sent to Sarah yesterday. Um, so you saw we had six runs, 10 so far this calendar year. Um, of the six runs, three were mutual aid out. We went to two structure fires and a, a vehicle off the road surface. Um, as far as training last month, we did knots. It's, a, it's one of those um, skills that if you don't use it, you lose it. So we review it. And um, 
repairs. Our 1986 rescue went in for repairs. It needed a new hydro boost pump. Uh, not only does that deal with the power steering, but also the brakes. Uh, it took a couple days for them to get hold of a part, so it was out of service for three days. Uh, that's going to continue to be an issue with that hold of a vehicle. Um, we have had a, our first meeting with um, uh, Lakes Region Fire Apparatus um, to go over to get a, a, an estimate of what a new rescue would cost. Um, looking at the possibility of talking to E1 as well. Um, so we're, we're starting to go ahead and look to see. We know it's going to have to be done. We want to come with an educated guesstimate on how much it's going to cost and what decade it might actually arrive. Probably right now they're saying if we said today we were going to get it, it probably wouldn't be until late 24 or early 25 before we'd actually get it. And that just makes that rescue that much older, the, the current one. Um, uh, we're still waiting to get back the paperwork from Zoll on the new AED. We got the tax thing in, so we're waiting for them to get their act together and send it back to us. As far as Fast Squad, we had 12, 12 calls, uh, nine were medical only, and three were in conjunction with um, motor vehicle accidents. Any questions? We, we did have an increase in our average response. We're up to over five responders per okay. call, which is pretty That's good. That's cool. Great. Any questions? Great. Um, so the, the only question I have, Jeff, is you're keeping your eyes out for, and I know all the issues, but I mean, you're keeping your eyes out for a good used one, right? For the rescue? I mean, at this point, I'm not wasting my time on a used rescue because mm -hmm. used rescues are going to be about the shape that ours is. Mm -hmm. Even coming from DOD, they're going to be old because that's a, that's a vehicle that's not replaced often. So it's run to its uh, full used capacity, which is 25 years old. Um, so right now I'm concentrating my efforts on a new one because that we will have for 25 to 30 years instead of getting something that may last us five maybe 10 years i hear you i'm just saying if all of a sudden something pops up if if, if that does if another colchester rescue pops up that uh kind of could fall into our lap then yes but as far as okay, that's, all, that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying i mean we certainly we, we certainly know, and you've been telling us for a long time about the about the rescue, and we get it. And uh, you know, we should we should make sure that it's in. And I'm not sure it is now. Is is the rescue truck in our capital plan at all? Yeah, it was due to be replaced last year. <laughs> Maybe we should, should review that. Anyway, yeah, okay. No, it's definitely something that uh, you know we had a budget committee meeting tonight and. The discussion about renewing the efforts on trying to uh, get some of these right in front of folks again, you know, uh, and to your to your point, it's, it is in there at one hundred and forty thousand dollars on the CIP. So, yeah, and we should get a, an estimate back here in a couple of weeks on what uh, they say it is. What we're looking at is something that we could. We're not getting all the bells and whistles, but we're getting something that. We can expand. The town's not getting smaller. Um, so we're looking at getting something that gives us a little room to expand on stuff we need to put on there. Uh, but we're not going hog wild on this thing. And we're looking at trying to do, they will work with us in getting a chassis through the state program, which reduces the cost. I don't think E1 would be amenable to that, but I'm going to reach out to them and see what their cost is going to be. Can you? Can you expand on what E1 is for somebody it's, like it's myself? It's another, it's another company. It's the, the same company that built Engine 1. So they're a company, they have a rep up here, but they're a company down in Florida. Um, so it's just, it's that's the name of the company. They, they just specialize, okay. They do fire apparatus. Yep. Okay. And of course, a reminder, VTEC closed and no longer is an option to us. Right, right. Anything else, Carbon? Any questions?
We have the MOU. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I know we do. So um, we need to uh, consider whether we're going to finally approve that MOU or not. Is the question, and you have a copy of it in your packet, I believe. And we did discover that 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 language that was of concern in the last meeting has been in our previous yeah. how many so many sarah here you're con uh, i think you're conflating two mous that one that one you approved last well the last meeting that was for the ambulance service this is the mou for capital west Cap mutual aid capital or capital west. capital I fire keep doing mutual that. aid capital fire mutual aid it's a different mou you guys have yeah. it here and are there any changes in this year's from previous years? Not that I no. I mean, we, I did look over the the um, the bylaws, and we need to go through and make sure all the inventory stuff that they say that we actually have on one or both trucks. Um, but that's a that's a that's a our task. So. In the past, was do that before we can approve the MRU? No, that's something. That's something. It's this is what you. It's a constant check to make sure you have that equipment and do the hose testing and. It's an annual thing. Can I ask a question? Was this any? Was this an understanding with the Middlesex Volunteer Department previously, or the town of Middlesex? It was the town of Middlesex that signed on for the Capital Fire Mutual. Okay, but who signed this? It has the select board. Over. I guess because I, we I, made that change, I don't know if I that affects imagine, anything. I would imagine the select board because I don't think we never did. I I never signed one okay. of those in the past. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have to change anything with them because we yeah. made the no, change. No, I don't believe so. Okay. I think it all stays the same. With the understanding that we inventory that equipment, are there any other questions or concerns? In that case, is there a motion, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, who was that? Nobody, yeah, uh, I'm just <laughs> finishing reading some stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Just hold on one second, Peter, sorry. Oh, take your time, take your time. I don't recall ever signing it. That's why I asked. I don't know if this has ever had to been had been signed since the original back in was it nineteen seventy something. They, they're talking about the seventies. <laughs> so I, I start to, you started to talk about funds yeah. being maintained and stuff. Do you for the recall this, Peter? And yeah. Stuff like that. Do you, Peter? I I think we need some time to look into some of this stuff. Yeah. To be honest with you, you know, there's. They're talking about, you know, making sure funds are held in separate accounts and all that. I just asked Rinda, and it's nothing she's aware of. So, um, who yeah. would we ask though for a help on this? Who's the who? Who created this MOU? It, uh, probably Joe Allsworth, who is the uh, president of the, and he's the assistant chief in Bur in Barry City. And there's also something in here about. It committing to at least 10 years yeah. after the date of the project's initial operation. is This isn't for that new service that they're talking about down the well, road, Well, it is, is talking it? about radio systems and stuff as well, it, and I had that same, I had that same question, so. I believe it's, it's both. It's committing to the radio system, which was, I think, that, that MOU last month, as well as that's, the, the capital yeah. fire mutual aid system. Right, that one that was going to cost us all kinds of money on, in the future. Is that what this is? I think it's no. tied. It's, it's, it's tied, tied together it's, to it's some tied extent. To like it, bullet three. 
yeah, looks exactly. like it's yeah. tied together with that to some extent. Because right. is that the one that says Montpelier is going to house the money, or was that? What something about Montpelier was in here? Um, because yeah, it just does yeah. say that Montpelier is going to facilitate. Uh, yeah, so that, that it's going to be the agent. Two point four million. I think it's two point four million yeah. so, that they've gotten so far. Montpelier is going to house it. Right. I think the main reason is because they're the dispatch for the capital mutual fund. Well, I would suggest with all of that that we pass over this for tonight. Is there any particular urgency to, to approving this tonight? I don't think so. Now, the next meeting for the group is next month. So it's not a, it's not a this month thing. Okay. And this is what I'm not quite sure. They're t they talk about a plan, and then they talk about a project, but they don't actually define project. And I think I'm not it sure has something to do with the thing is. that was presented that was, to us. I think us. it's tied together with it's that It's all dispatch. tied together with it. Yeah. The thing that we signed a few right. weeks ago, the project. I agree with you, Peter. I think we pass over and look into it some more. Yeah. I don't, I don't, dis I don't disagree. Maybe they're just disagree. feeling like they want more... Um, I don't know, of a commitment or something. And this is why they have a new MO. Should we, I mean, the question is, should we ask somebody from that organization to come in and meet with us and answer our question? I mean, we can, we can read that stuff. And every time I read one of those documents, I pick up something else. I would like to. I would think it would be nice to, nice to at least have them, have them uh, zoom into our meeting and be available to answer questions. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, I think that makes sense. I can email them and CC Sarah on it. And... That would be great, Jeff. Thank you. you can see it. How about the second week of here? How about your second meeting in March on the 21st? Because that will be yeah. the fire department meeting. Does that make sense? It does. That sounds good. As long as, as long as there is no reason that it needs to be signed sooner. Since we've never signed anything. I, I don't ever recall <laughs> seeing it. So. Okay, I'll, I'll reach out to them, and uh, like I said, I'll CC Sarah on it, and I'll, I'll say for the 21st and March. around 5.30ish would be my guess. Uh, Cody, he's coming in, so I would say 5.40. Yeah. 5.40, okay. Uh, Thanks, guys. Any, anything yeah. else for the fire department? Okay, thank you very much. Your sure thing. Thank moving, you. Uh, moving right along, highway report. We're back on schedule. Good job. Yeah, we're actually a little early. Oh, look at that. Do you need to rest? <laughs> Is there... Don't get too Don't get too excited. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We had some repairs on the Freightliner, um, and we've been working on filling holes in the roads. Potholes, right? Potholes and mud holes and hopefully uh, they'll harden up for a little bit longer but who knows did we uh, go to Brook Road today yeah we did we need to do more with it but yes huh? we need to do more with it but yes and we're doing using our material from the pit the stuff we made last fall there you go all the tailings you mean all the the, the gravel we made yeah. from the tailings and the uh, asphalt millings yep yep when you ripped up Santa Road, is that right? Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's where we're at. That's your whole report? Yeah. That's Are the roads posted? I'm sorry. First of the month. We need to be, yeah, another week. We need to be thinking about uh, when we're going to put in an order for that new truck. Yes, I, I am waiting to hear back when they're going to have pricing for the models. The models okay. that we would be getting so okay. we can get an accurate which i heard would be within the next few weeks so it'll be coming along okay, okay. I mean, they hold to that price whatever price they're going to give us but we know that isn't necessarily going to happen either right we can try yeah i hear you thank you uh thank you Eric. we got a couple new uh uh, negotiators so yes we have a different negotiator Peter yeah I hear you the Frenchman he's tough I hear you. 
So, uh, I don't know how much, I'm not, I don't know how much negotiating we'll be able to do, but let's try. <laughs> so yeah. while we're, while we're talking about proposals for vehicles and all that kind of stuff, I just bring up the excavator. It looks like that's on the, the plan of replacement for 24. Yep. Um, have we started looking into... I just started writing up a spec form for that as well. They're not normally as uh, hard to get as... They're the not. Their, their lead time isn't as far out yeah. as the trucks. Yeah. We're talking probably 12 weeks. Okay, thank you. Um, Treasurer's report, Dorinda. I don't have anything. I was hoping to get you a budget status report, but the last week or so has been extremely busy. So um, with taxes being due and everything else, so that didn't happen. So hopefully for the next meeting. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, let's see, we need to approve the minutes of the February 7th, 2023 select board meeting. Is there a motion on those minutes? I move that we accept the minutes of the uh, oh, that was too easy. February 7th. Okay, and is there a second? Second. Next bell. All in favor of approving those minutes, please say aye. Aye. Oh, I wasn't aye. there. Any opposed? No, I'm just okay, abstaining because I wasn't there. Orders. You've got plenty of people that uh, sign the order, so I presume you will uh, review them and do that. Um, correspondent, Sarah, anything? Uh, I just received an email tonight from um, Russ Bennett, who says that there's plenty of water in the Colby property, would like to discuss that with the board. I'm going to recommend that he wait until maybe about April. You've got an organizational meeting. You've got this VIA stuff. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing yeah. is that um, I received an email from Stephanie Smith from FEMA on uh, Thursday, Friday actually, saying that after months and months of delay with the homeowner on Rich Road, who was, to, was required to produce receipts about um, money that FEMA had given her back in 2012, uh, Stephanie has found a workaround, and now they can go through with the closing on the house in Rich Road. I'm going to need some guidance from the board. I just want you to know that our end, the lawyer end, was done in August. And we have been waiting for FEMA to come around and go forward. And they have put the brakes on this because of these, these receipts issues. We now have only until October of 2023, seven months down the road, to close, send out RFPs for asbestos consulting, send out uh, RFPs if we need to for asbestos removal, send out RFPs and get uh, deconstructed, including digging up all the utilities and returning the property to its natural state. I don't know if that is feasible. I'm not in that this industry and I don't understand if that's, but I don't know if that's something the board would like to discuss. I feel very, very nervous about going forward. I don't want us to be stuck with a, with a white elephant, so to speak, that FEMA suddenly says we can't have. I mean, this is a 2012 event and this is now 2023 that we're dealing with this. So I don't know. To push that date back? I have I asked Stephanie and I have not had a response. Well, let's see if they can push it back. I th I think I mean this this has been a slow struggle every step of the way. Let's not run up against some hard deadline that kills the whole thing after all this. Well, we've just been fiddling our thumbs waiting for them to come around. So I don't is does that sound like a crazy timeline to do that? Maybe that's not crazy. Eric, you're you're a construction guy. It could happen awesome. fast if they can get yeah. if they can get the abatement stuff taken care of. Yeah, that's going to be the holdup. Yeah. Right, it will because we have to do right. it. We have to do it through a technical process. We have to issue RFPs. You've got to mm -hmm. choose the contractors, and we have to you know consider several factors when we do choose the contract. The, the physical work is not. I just, okay. 
I just, I just know struggle still a struggle to get anybody to do anything in a timely manner and contract uh -huh. as far as I know, or, and maybe, maybe your experience is different, Randy, but I already have people telling me they can't do things until next year, boiler replacements, roof replacements, things like that. So I'm, I'm just a little nervous that getting those abatement people in there in a timely manner might be a struggle. I don't know. Maybe we should call them and ask them. I'll call around. Yeah. If anybody knows. Let's, let's, do let's we, do that. Do we have a report let's, on what need on, on what hazardous materials need to be abated first? We don't know anything about this property. Yeah, I didn't think we had we, seen we any of that, right? Zero about this property. It. Yeah. It's not it's not our property. It's right. it belongs to a private home. Well, that's that's slightly the trick. based on the stage that there is some substance and we don't know about any underground oil tanks or any of that stuff, right? No, and you would have to dig them up and, and fill them in, and same thing with a septic. It's it's not just knocking down buildings. You have to re re remove all the uh, utilities. The septic isn't, isn't too bad. The underground oil tank could be a nightmare. I just I just don't know what the what the lead time is, so I'm I'm hesitant to not be concerned about that date without knowing about the availability of people to do this. Okay. Well, I'll get back to you, but I'm going out of the... I'm going away, so I feel bad. I'm not going to be really no, available until the end bad. of March. Yeah, I know. But if you're worried about it, I'm worried about it. Is what I'm saying. So let's see what let's see what Stephanie has to say. I mean, I have to I have to believe they can they can push back that deadline if we need to, as long as we're making a good faith effort to get it done. They certainly have no hesitancy to drag their heels, right? I'm sorry. What did you say, Peter? He I'm, just saying, to I'm just saying they don't they don't move with the greatest of speed either. So has to say but um i don't disagree with any of that we don't want to be we don't want to be rooting around trying to do that when the ground's freezing and the rain's pouring down and etc no, <laughs> yeah. so let's uh, uh we need to spend a little time talking about preparation for our informational meeting um how how we're going to do that we're going to do it we're going to do it by Zoom, right? Are we going to have an in-person option at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Yes, we are. We, is, is the, is the intent that we will do this the way we're doing our select board meetings, where hopefully we will be in person and people can Zoom in and people can also show up in person, right? Yep. So, uh, Phil, I did, I did read your, uh, your report on on front porch forum. Thank you for that. That was that was excellent. That's undoubtedly going to be uh, where most of the most of the questions come. I have to believe. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, I don't know what else we really need to do other than be be uh, Victor and Eric be ready to answer questions about the roads and other other board members be ready to to talk about budget budget issues and and. Randy, if you would, if you would get together a little uh, speech about our CIP plan, because people are going to be confused by that. Well, we can't just defer it to the chairman of the board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Are we going to have a an agenda? Whether he can he can respond or not, but uh, you've been the most involved in it, so it would be great to great to hear from you, and then we can all uh, we can all answer questions. But I just want to be. I think. In, in, and I just got the town report. I haven't had a chance to really study it, but I mean, to me, those are going to be the big, uh, going to be the big, big question items. Yeah, I haven't even seen mine in the mailbox yet. Yeah, I haven't either. Got, I have. We got ours. I got mine a long time oh. ago. Yep. We got ours. Yeah. Must be a new somebody. Right. 
You really? Have well, your mailbox you really is next to my here. mailbox. I, I know. I think I got mine like a week ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I got mine on the. Mailman just doesn't like me. I, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I got it Friday. Right, we got ours Friday. Uh, yeah, maybe it's Friday. I had a phone call from the Times Argus today saying I was going to get four papers in one day when they finally got their act together with the post office. That's really helpful. <laughs> Wait, but, but Peter, I'm sorry. This I we I know we had informational meetings the last few years. Is there an agenda? Like, I'll put together an agenda. It's basically the warning. It's basically the warning. We go through the warning, right? Yeah. That's how it's done. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, going going through the warning is is relatively straightforward. It's the budget, I think, that's going to elicit. Me, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Sorry, I hope we get, I hope we get a good. I hope we get a tur good turnout. We just don't get, you know, half a dozen people. But we'll see. I asked, uh, I asked uh, Susan Clark about how we make our uh, informational meeting exciting and interesting so people will show up. She said it's pretty much hopeless. People, people don't show up. Um, well, we think we get like I think last time we got like twenty people, of which it was all like. The people who work for the town. <laughs> well, actually, I've gotten several protocols. Right. People are interested. But we, but Susan's going to be there, right? The, we just have to do the best. But as we as we go forward, tiptoeing down the path of having Australian ballot a permanent, potentially a permanent thing. I mean, we just need to pay attention to how we do these informational meetings and make them as as concise and as good and as interesting as possible. And hopefully allowing people to zoom in will get more participation. I don't know. We just have to see. Does it, as far as everybody knows, they will, you all will be there for that informational meeting. Is there anybody who can't be there? I just put it on my calendar. What's the date? Vic has a question, 28th. Peter. Oh, I'm busy that day. I'm sorry. Vic has a question. Are we yes. gonna are we gonna invite the people that are in the special articles to come and talk? Is that a question for me? That's what we did. That's who came I think last year. The chairman year. deferred I think it to it the uh, town clerk. Ah. We have not. We have not. We have not in the past. Vic. We we start we start doing that. We're gonna have a four oh, hour informational meeting. No, they no, did come, Peter. They did. They did. I, I sent, I sent, I, blit, I blitzed them all last time, last couple of times, and said we're having a meeting on the, you know, the 28th or whatever, and so tune in. Here's they were it. our guests. Those yeah, were the right. people they that came to yeah, the meeting. Right. No one else came. That's why we were up to 20 some. Yes, exactly. Right. That's exactly right. I remember this. So now. if anybody has any questions about, you know, what the money is for, they should be able to answer that. They do at town yeah. meeting. Right. Yeah. No, that's yeah. that's fine, and certainly the you know the bigger ones, the library, and and some of the bigger ones, people are likely to have some questions. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone? Uh, you are going to one of you guys is going to need to come in to sign the orders because I can't sign because I wasn't here, so it's not fully signed. Not the orders, just the minutes. I mean the minutes, rather. Minutes from okay. last. Just one second. Can I sign them and scan them? Sarah, does that work or do I need to come in? It's not a big deal. You know what? If you just if you to prove the orders, when you get a chance, I'll leave them out there and you happen to come by, just sign them. How's that? Okay. Or All Phil. Right. Before okay. before yeah. Phil goes. If you give me permission, I'll cover it for you, Peter. This is Phil's last official <laughs> this is Phil's oh, last Phil. regular meeting. <laughs> Thank you for oh, your service, Phil. Phil. Where's the cake? Where are the cocktails? Where are the exactly? Yeah. <laughs> the cocktails were downstairs. You it's did a, it's you did all sitting on the table, just out of the video. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. You know, there you go. You're having a party without me. I I see how it works. So Phil, it's been a wonderful experience working with you, and I sincerely mean it. That we we thank you for your service, as they as they always say, and. Uh, I hope you stay involved in town stuff. I don't expect you to continue to have to write the financial reports. We'll have to figure out how to, huh? how to do that. that. We, may need your, we may need your advice and counsel, but we won't, uh, <laughs> won't uh, bother you about trying to, uh, trying to do that. <laughs> well, thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it. So how, how many years has it been? Do you know? Just four. Just yeah. four. Yeah. yeah. 
I was do you had two two year terms? Really? No, I did. I had I filled out one term and then a three year. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Yeah. Who did you replace? Um, Callan. Oh right. God, I've been on this board too long. Yeah. <laughs> what are you working to do? Ten years? It'll be ten. Yeah. Then I'll pass yeah. the torch. Peter's like, what? How many years for you, Peter? I don't even know. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and look. It's been a long time. Maybe too long, but a long time. Twenty? Maybe? Oh no! Wait. Thirty to forty. Closer really? To 40. Yeah. 40 <laughs> years on the board? Close 35 anyways, I think. Holy smokes. Yeah. I think it was 1970. That's dedication. <laughs> Have you been the chair the whole time? No. No. Well, Kelly no. was before him. Uh, I started out, started out on the budget committee. Are you Randy? That's uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Can I just, just, since we have a few minutes before we have to do the Board of Civil Authority, we can't do that early, right? Because we don't have enough people. They're yeah. all going to Zoom in at 630. Mm, probably. Can we text them? <laughs> we got 14 minutes. We'll okay. fill it up. Well, no, I was just going to say is, so as I'm making the meeting, the subgroup, who would like to be involved in that? Sarah, I would like you to be involved in it. The very least from the I, town. I just have a yeah. You're going. When are you leaving? Um, I'm leaving the 13th. Oh, this will happen before then. Okay. It will happen like next town, week. Yeah, town meeting and all sorts of things. Oh but, yeah. right. But you know, yes, you can squeeze it in. It's just kind of a crazy time here. But now the taxes are over. It's less. Do you crazy. want it to be after town meeting? No, I think we should do it as soon as possible. Yeah, I think so too. Like I'm thinking, like, well, next week is town meeting. Oh no, yeah. it's not. No. We could. I, I'm thinking next week. Right, and Dorinda, do you want I'd to be like a part to of it be, too? Yeah, okay. I think as far as getting. And what about you, select board people? Who would like to be involved in this sort of subcommittee of thinking about this space? I think it'd be great to meet here too, I'm so we can to be, actually I'm be happy, here. Happy to be, Liz. I just don't know how available I'm going to be for meetings, but. Who okay. is select board person, Liz? Yeah, you're. No, I'm just saying. I, I want to make. I, I don't want to like not include other select board members if they want to attend, like a Vic or Randy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the middle of the work day yeah, mostly. I don't have the time. Yeah, you don't have the time. Okay, so what about you, Vic? It'll be during the middle of the Probably day. Probably the middle of the day. Yeah, I don't want to do nighttime meetings and then neither no. does anyone else. Huh? I work for them. You work I do for too. Them. I just, we just won't give you any time I flex off. my time. No, Eric, you can't have any time off. So, I mean, next week actually is pretty good, I think. Okay. So, um, so Dorinda and Sarah, I'll just include you, and if you want to come, how about that? <laughs> well, you're not answering me. We do have no, to be careful, no, right? With having you know, three of us on that. Yeah, we would have to so, warn it. Yes. yes. We would no, have to warn it if there were three. You, it's got two, if it's, if you only have two, it doesn't have to be. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying that Peter was Peter was talking so about possibly a technique. Yeah, no, I don't know what don't mine is do, either yet. Don't do three. Um, don't make sure three people are there. Yeah, let's just not do three people. Yeah, that's what I was just getting at, though. So three people, and then we don't have to warn it. Um, so then it's Dave, it's um, Sandy. Sandy, it's one of the weatherization people. Like Greg Richards. Yeah, Greg, and it's um, Sarah Paul. Seedman or Patty, because they wanted to be, they've already reached out to me via email. So, I mean, I think there's plenty of space. When you say weatherization people, people, you mean the energy committee? I mean the energy committee people, yes. <laughs> I thought that's what you meant, yeah. but. Um, Okay, so Sarah and Dorinda, are there days that are better for you than others? Um, I pref it's easier if I don't do it on a Tuesday or Thursday, but okay. other than that, it doesn't really. I mean, I can always change that if yep. need be. But. Okay, my my day of Wednesday the first or March first looks looks good. Okay, for that maybe like for a morning me. things. So maybe what I'll do is I'll reach out to Sandy that. and. Okay. Try Dave, for Wednesday. And yeah, maybe try yeah, for Wednesday. Okay. Um, that works. Good. Can I say something before yes. you get off that topic? Yes. Are you ready? I'm ready. I just had a conference. I've had a, been in conference with the road foreman. Right now. 
You have to sweat now. Well, you just uh, we, do, there, we yeah? talk every day. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we don't think you need a uh, highway highway crew office no, in this that's office. That's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Okay, so no highway crew. Yeah. Office and I knew that was. I didn't think that didn't quite make I, that sense. That came to me. up because they were talking about if it was going to be relocated. Yeah, that's a different situation. That's a different situation. Yeah, I, I don't right. think it should be separate this far away from the, the ground. No, that didn't make sense to me no. either. No, no, not a good idea. So I didn't want to bring that up. <laughs> no. I wanted to, you know, throw it out there. But. Um. I think the comments that were made referred to that, that if it was relocated over by the exactly. highway garage, that That's a different story. That totally be, different. That's yeah. when you would include a space in it, but it wasn't as if it sat you know, on the side also, of the I've had requests for people to put that the survey results online, and I think that people yeah. want to see the um, comments as well. Yes. Uh, Paul, Paul had asked about that. Yeah, Lowry will left. put them up. Okay. Just, could you just send a link to uh, the town... Uh, website so I can put it on middlesexvermont.org? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of what's up on websites and whatnot, um, is anybody, can anybody answer the question as to whether or not the proposed chaining changes um, from the Planning Commission and the uh, regulations were isolated and put up on the website and not just the full document? Uh, I got some phone calls recently about that. Um, and I, I had said that I thought they were put up on the What's Next Middlesex the website. The changes. The changes. The changes the just the highway. changes, but not, she had that. but not the full document. They're interested in not having to read through the full document right. to dig out the changes. I, you know, I have this in several spaces. Like, I have it in a zoning space. I think I have the one with the changes in there. there. But I, can, I can put it up. I mean, I've, I, I want to give people what they what they're going to vote on. So I need to give them the whole document. And then I need to get the zoning sure. map, the new zoning map. I can go look to see if I've got another. I, to, I'm just so nervous about it because I don't want to put up something that's wrong. Do you know what I mean? I, I do. And uh, that track changes drives me nuts. When we did that the last time with the zoning regs, it was all a mess. So maybe what I'll do is I'll ask Sandy to send me a copy that just highlights all the changes. I think I have one down there. I think I have one on the website, but I'll put it right on the front. That's okay. Fine. Yeah, that's that's fine. I'll I reach need, out. I need help with the website. I can't keep doing this website. It's a bad platform, and it just it requires too much time for me to, to handle it. I just need a good volunteer in town. If, anybody, if you know of anybody, I think my neighbors across the street might be able to do it. And who does, who does websites? Well, I just need someone to update it and streamline it and make it Somebody that's different. into that? Yeah. Ron Sweet. Okay, that's not a bad idea. That's a good idea. Six six one eight. eight, 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 eight. <laughs> okay, we're a full service select board. I guess so. Uh, after after all of, after we get everything done with elections and everything, I'm gonna that's gonna be one of my summer projects, my 2023 okay. project. It's, you know, it'll work. Okay, I will do that. Is there a backup time besides Wednesday, March first? <laughs> Like, I could do Monday. You could do Monday. Let me look at my um, calendar. Uh, I could do Monday. Monday's the 27th. Okay. Uh -huh. Monday, I have a meeting with finance at 11. I'm going to log. Uh, if you guys can want to adjourn this meeting, uh, since we're just talking about scheduling, uh, I can yeah. then. I want to Let's turn the meeting and give everybody a little a little break before the Board of Civil Authority meeting. I am going to. Uh, you have enough people for the Board of Civil Authority meeting, Liz? Chris is here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, think I'm gonna ready. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna skip out of the Board of Civil Authority meeting. All right, thanks, okay. Peter. We'll okay. talk okay. soon. So we are officially adjourned. Phil, you are yeah. officially adjourned. Oh, bye. Thank you again. Bye. <laughs> Next week, he's not going anywhere. So I could do, um, yes, you guys, I could do two okay. o'clock on, on Monday. No, <laughs> two o'clock on on Monday is that too late?